Hello. Hello, Paul. How are you? Jasmine? Yeah. Pleased to meet you. Really nice to talk to you, you today. You too. How's the drive up? Yeah, good. Oh, good. Well, here we are. Welcome again. Thank you. Did you grow up in a musical family? Uh, yeah, pretty, uh, quite musical. My, my mother sang and played piano and her parents were the singers. Um, Dad wasn't very musical, but he loved music, loved listening to it. And um, we all had piano lessons as kids. For a, I had piano lessons when I was 10 and 11. All my, I was the, well, one of eight, so we all had to, it was compulsory to do piano. And then uh, I decided to switch to trumpet because my older sister was going out with a, a guy who played trumpet. And I thought, I thought this guy, you know, I thought he was the bee's knees, this guy. So he brought around some old jazz records with Louis Armstrong. So I switched to trumpet and played trumpet in high school. But yeah, all, all, most of my brothers and sisters, you know, can play, pick up something, play, play something on guitar or piano. Were they all influences on your music? Uh, yeah, especially, I guess, especially the older. Um, how, how many siblings do you have? I only have one other sibling. Are you the yeah. oldest or the youngest? Oldest, yeah. Right. So you have to be the influencer, you see. Yeah, but my brother doesn't play music. Right. Oh, he might. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, my, I had um, four older brothers and sisters, so, and this is in the early 60s when I was, they were bringing, as, when they were teenagers, they were bringing records in the house, so the Beatles singles and Rolling Stones and, um, and then Bob, Bob Dylan records and um, Lenny Cohen. And uh, then later on it was Pink Floyd and lots of um, bands like Moody Blues, and so I got a lot of music from my uh, my older siblings, probably especially from um, a, a lot from my my brother Martin. Yeah. How old were you when you started songwriting? Uh, Twenty one. So this is much later than you. When did you start? Um, I was eleven. Yeah. Eleven. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I didn't want to, I didn't. Well, I, I didn't really start playing guitar till I was about eighteen. So, and then I was just learning. I played a lot of folk music and learnt you know, uh, Hank Williams songs and uh, Neil Young and Bob Dylan, Lenny Cohen again, and all that. So, um, but I wanted to be a writer. So I was I was writing. I wanted to be you know either a poet or a, um, some kind of writer. And, and so I was writing. I was writing sort of what are, I guess like prose poems, but they weren't songs. Then one day. When I was 21, I wrote a song. I thought, ah, oh, I can do this. So when did you know that you wanted to be a poet or a, a writer? Uh, I think probably when I was about, about 15, 16. Um, I just used, used to write, you know, poems in a uh, little book. I think a lot of people write poems in a little book when they're 15, 16. Um, but, so uh, I kept, I thought, I just kept going. And um, I guess once I left school, I travelled around for a while and just wanted to wanted to be a writer. I wasn't quite sure what is kind there a, of writer. Is there a difference between songwriting and poetry or? Um, it's probably, there probably, probably is, but I, I'm not quite sure what, what the line is. I think some, I think it's a fairly blurry line. I mean, there's some, some poets uh, see themselves as just, you know, writing, uh, you know, they write their words down and they're not to be sung. Um, but that's, I think, you know, the original, when, uh, when humans started, first started making poems, I think they were always, always sung. So all the, all the old poetry from Homer through all the Greek, Greek tragedies, that a lot of that was sung. So um, a lot of poetry has been sung through the ages. I think it's a much more recent thing that the idea, some, somewhere in the last couple of centuries, maybe poetry split off from the music and became just just words on a page or... But I think poetry uh, should be said out loud. Well, I, think it, I think it's good to hear it out loud. So would you say that your songwriting is poetry or...? I would say it's, it's a form of poetry, but I think um, I, if you took away my lyrics from the songs and put them on a page, I wouldn't call them poetry. Maybe some, you could say, oh, that's... Po I would say, oh, that's a poem, that's good. And some of them have started as poems, but sometimes um, without the melody, the words are pretty, you know, um, banal. 
I think so. I think melody can sometimes really lift lift a song up. What do you write first? Do you write your um, your words, or do you write your music first? Well, I used to always write the the music first, and that's probably the main way uh, I write songs. It's it's more just you know fooling around with them, some chords, either on the guitar or or the piano, and then um, sort of singing gibberish basically is what I do. So that's singing sounds and then get words to fit it, if I like it. But more recently I've started, uh, because I've, more recently I've started putting other people's poems to music for fun and that sort of led me to writing poems of my own first and then putting the music to it. Do you think that the result of this... Let me ask you a question. Oh, oh, that scared me. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? Um, well, I kind of have it depending on the song, I guess. Like, one song I wrote, it was the lyrics and the, um, the guitar came like different and then I joined them up together. Mm. But yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes you get some, something over there that's one thing and something over there that's another thing and then you see, suddenly realise they can go together. Yeah, and then it just works. Yeah. It's just easy. That's the best, isn't it? Yeah. But do you generally write sort of, sort of a melody first or...? Um, I try, like, write words and then put music to it. I think that's what I usually do, yeah. yeah. And you find that, once, say, you have a set of words and you start putting music to it, you find that you have to start shifting the words around a bit to yeah, make it fit? Yeah, to make yeah. it, like, make that word go longer or... Yeah. Yeah, or cut some words off. Or, yeah. Yeah. What yeah, was it? Oh, yeah, you go. I just say it's a bit of a hodgepodge, isn't it? You just yeah, say, you just never know. Yeah. Um, what's it like... Um, hearing your song on the radio for the first time, how did you feel? Oh, very excited. I still remember hearing Before Too Long on the radio. For the, you know, I was driving with the band. We were driving between Melbourne and Sydney and it came on the radio and we just all went, we all just went nuts. We actually, we all started singing along really loud. Um, so that was very exciting. Yeah. It's the first time we'd heard the song um, coming at us. You know, we'd, we'd played the song and we'd played this, we'd sort of heard it when we recorded it, but but actually sort of hear it um, out in the world coming at us, that was sort of uh, very thrilling. What I was going to say... Have something. you heard one of yours yet? No, not yet. It's on online, but I haven't heard it on the radio right. yet. Yeah. Not on, um, on um, Triple J on Earth? Yeah, I, I popped it up there, yeah, yeah. a couple months Have ago. Have they played it? No. no. Will they tell you when they play it? Or? Um, they'll send me an email or something, a right. message, yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. Um, What's your recording process? Do you like go into the studio knowing what you're going to record, or? Yeah, um, yeah. I like to be pretty well prepared in the studio, so um, don't waste time. Um, it's pretty quick now, but it was sl slow when, when we first started. Um, recording in the '80s was a, was often could be quite slow because it was a whole sort of philosophy of do it track, you know, do each track separately and overdub and. We were sort of influenced by that a little bit, but I always like to make my records quick mm -hmm. and uh, get the band live and play it live and then add stuff if needed. Um, and that's the way, that's the way I mainly record now, get the band together, we rehearse the songs and then we get a studio, we've got a regular place in Melbourne that we go to called Sound Park. We mm -hmm. can all set up and play at the same time and, and um, we just play the song to it. Sounds right. Yeah, awesome. What do you do? Um, well, I've only recorded one song, but it took a bit of a while. It took a couple of days and, yeah, I got a couple of takes back. Yeah, yeah, it was a very different experience. I never experienced it before. Yeah. Um, hearing, yeah, sort of a... Um, it's sort of... Um, you learn so much when you record it because you actually... And then you hear it back and you think, oh... Because you hear it differently and you, reckon you think you hear things differently in your yeah, head. Yeah, and then... And you then you hear it coming back. Yeah. And then you want to just get crawled into a corner and... Yeah, like, exactly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you just, yeah. You, um, I still do. I still feel like that sometimes. Listen. Do you ever regret what you've recorded or released? Oh, yeah, yeah. There's songs out there that I think are, you know, not very good and... Um, but you know you can't take them back. But uh, you just—I think you know, right, right, you know, if you're a songwriter, you're going to have a—you have some, you're going to have lots of hits and misses. I'm not just talking about commercial hits. I'm just talking about some songs work better than others. So I've written—I've forgotten a lot of the songs I've written because I don't play them anymore because I don't really think they're up to scratch. 
but they're out there somewhere haunting me. <laughs> so don't write any, just don't write any bad songs, alright? Yeah. No, no. Um, how do you reckon your music has changed since you first started? Um, I don't know if it's changed that much. I still sort of. I don't know if it's changed that much. I think um, I, I use pretty simple chords. I probably write about the same sort of things. Um, I think maybe I've. I don't know. It's. I'm hoping it's got better. But like I said, you said some songs just pop up really well, and some songs you sort of you write them and they're they sort of they songs that work for a while, but then they sort of. They, um, they serve their purpose and then you, that you sort of don't, you lose touch with them. Uh, but that, it's sort of, I can't predict that at the time. But how do you know when it's a good song and how do you know when the song's finished? Uh, that's a really good question. And uh, um, I don't, I don't, I often don't know whether a song's any good until it's, I've played it for a while or, so, Sometimes I get excited as, and when I've just written a song, I think, oh, this is great, and I'll play it to um, you know, my loved ones or pe people around me, or take it to the band. Sometimes a good way to tell whether the song's any good is when you take it to the band, and uh, if they sort of, you know, jump at it with sort of this great sort of enthusiasm, you know the song's good. And sometimes they're not so enthusiastic. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they, they can, you can just sort of tell. Um, so you sort of maybe take it back to the drawing board or... Fix it up or... Yeah. yeah. Mm. Is there any um, songs that you're, you're really proud of and want to talk to us about? Uh, well, there's, I guess the songs, that, the songs that I still play that I never get sick of playing, How to Make, make Gravy, yeah. I like, I, I just, that, that sort of, it's an unusual song, so I, I, I like it. I had no idea how it sort of happened and... Um, it sort of breaks up some sort of rule, formula rules of songwriting, but it still works, so I like that one. Um, I like They Thought I Was Asleep. Um, yeah, I, I, I like a lot of them to play, but I guess what, yes, I mean, songs sometimes, you know, you get sick of them and then, or so, you know, or you, your feeling towards them changes or you think, you know, one day you think, I really like this song, and then you, another day you think, oh, yes, it's okay. So it's not, a, it's not really a constant thing. You yeah. said that they, like, um, your brothers and your sisters bought the records into the house. Did they, Little like, singles, yeah. yeah. Yeah, did they, um, like, all those artists, did they um, inspire your music? Do you reckon, like, they helped you write your, your songs that you've written now? I think that's all part of the mix, yeah. I love the Beatles. Uh, if I was... If, if I was in charge of a school for songwriting, and um, that would be the f the Beatles songbook would be the first book in the syllabus because I think they wrote every kind of song. Yeah, you know, they wrote really, you know, great rock and roll songs, really, really s simple, sweet songs. They wrote songs with, you know, really interesting chords. They were, even in their in their simple songs, they were experimental. Yeah, um, and even their um, solo stuff after the Beatles, like all George Paul. John and Ringo, they all had really good music afterwards mm. too, yeah. You got a Beatles song you can play? Me? Um, yeah, I can. Blackbird. <laughs> Might just have to watch. <laughs> Singing in the dead of night Take these broken wings and learn to fly Oh, your life You are only waiting for this moment to arrive Blackbird singing in the dead of night Take these sunken eyes and learn to see Oh, your life You are only waiting for this moment to be free
So I couldn't even play along. It's it took me forever to learn. Yeah, I bet it So did. many YouTube videos. Oh, great. Wow. Where do you get your ideas for your songwriting and your lyric writing? Um, well, a lot of them from other songs or from things I read or from poems or things people say. Uh, just from anywhere, really. I think song songwriting is just a matter of keeping your ears open, paying attention. Um, and I, I, I try to, if I, th you know, think of a line for a song, I try to write it down straight away because otherwise I forget it. Um, where's the biggest place you've ever played at? The biggest? Probably the MCG, probably wow. the biggest crowd, probably um, Grand Final this year. We've done Grand Final twice, but um, so probably those two, it's about 90,000 And how does that feel like? hearing everyone sing your song and seeing everyone like, you know, singing along? Um, well, at the grand final is different because not everyone's there for the music. So it's more, so it's, that's a slightly different thing, but um, more like at our own shows at big festivals when you hear the crowd all, all singing along. That's a good feeling, of course, yeah. Does it make you um, inspired to write more music? Um, yeah, I think anything that, if you, when people like your songs, it gives you confidence to keep writing because don't always um, don't always feel writing's not really when you're actually by yourself writing. It's not necessarily very you're not feeling that confident. You're not really know. I think writing is more like scratching around trying to find something, and most of the time nothing works. Do you find that like? Yeah, it's like you look at what you've written and you're like, oh, that's so stupid. Why would I write that, you know? Yeah. Why would yeah. I play that? But then maybe a couple of days after you look back and you're like, oh, maybe. Maybe work. there's something there and yeah. you go back to it. Yeah. Do you get bored writing songs? Um, depends. On, like, if I tell myself I have to write, I don't really... Like, there's not much that comes out of it, but if I want to write, then more comes out from yeah. that. Yeah. So you don't set sort of, do you set time aside to write or just wait sort of when, just, when it happens? Yeah, if, it happens. if I want to write, I'll write, yeah. Yeah. How many bands have you been in? Um, oh, I don't know. Uh, probably lost track. Um, and I had bands, my very first band was called The Debutantes in Adelaide, probably in 1976. Um, and then I've had different bands, some with names, some without. And also um, uh, had a band called The Dots, but that had a lot of, quite a few changing members. Um, funnily enough, a lot of guitar players called Chris. But, um, and then High Rise Bombers was an early band in Melbourne. So um, then I've had um, The Messengers for a long time. And then um, now I've sort of, I've got, the band is pretty set for the last... I mean, the band I play with most, um, we don't really have a name, but it's the, same, it's the same people or pretty much the same squad of people that we've been playing with for, for the last 12 years. My drummer, Peter Luscombe, I've been playing with on and off for 25 years. And Bill on, on bass, and he, we've been together about 16 years. So... Um, and I've had put blue, blue, a bluegrass band together a couple of times, so um, yeah, sort of. It's hard to put an exact number on it. There's yeah, a few. there's a lot. <laughs> Can you tell us a bit about your song from Little Things, Big Things Grow? Oh uh, yeah, it's not, it's not just my song. I wrote it with Kev Carmody, and um, we wrote it uh, at Wivenhoe Dam in Queensland on a camping trip, and it's based on a true story, a story of um, the Gringy. Stockman um, going on strike and walking off cattle station at Wayfield in the Northern Territory and then uh, it, it turned into a, a land claim to, uh, which lasted nearly nine years 
and they eventually got their land back under the Gough Whitlam government. And in the ceremony handing the, the, the lands back, Gough Whitlam, the Prime Minister at the time, poured dirt into the hands of Vincent Lingari, who was the main spokesperson for the Gurindji. And there's a very famous picture by a guy called Merv Bishop of, of, that, of, those, of that action. And that's, that was a spark for the song, that picture. Um, I, I, a lot of my songs come from, you know, images or, or pictures first, so. Um, and I remember I knew, I knew that story pretty vaguely and on that camping trip with Kev, we started talking about it and he knew more of the story and so we started the song there. And, um, and we didn't quite finish it then and then we both, um, he lives in Queensland, I went back to Melbourne. And then I read a book by Frank Hardy called The Unlucky Australians, which is also that story from Frank's point of view, because he got involved um, as a, with the unions, help, uh, giving support to the Gurindji. And, um, and after finishing that book, I learned, you know, learned a few more things and, and sort of Kevin and I finished the song. Um, well, I think we must have finished it off by phone in 1988. I don't think we could email then, or even f or fax. We probably just finished it off over the phone, or um, maybe even mailed him a letter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't remember, but we we finished it off. But um, and we're both still singing it. It's yeah, it's so day. awesome that like you can write about our history of Australia through like songs. You can tell people about it, and it's really cool. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's, you know, it's a really um, crucial story and it was a very big, very big part of the, the land rights movement. I mean, there are other things going on too uh, around the same time, a little bit before and, and after, but that, I guess that particular story resonated with me, you know, again, starting from that picture. Do you think that music can change people's thoughts on things and do you think it can help um, show different perspectives? Uh, yeah, I mean, you don't, you, I think you don't really know. You sort of, it's hard to sort of measure it or quantify it, but I think, you know, songs, songs, um, just they sort of, what, they sort of do their work um, without you and sometimes they can be part of, um, you know, maybe social change, but there's, it's usually, it's not just the song, it's usually a song with other things going on, so. Um, but yeah, I think, I mean, I, I just know from my experience that songs have, have affected me. That's why I wanted to write songs, so I think songs, I think songs are, are powerful. They've had a powerful effect on me, so I think, why, why, why wouldn't they do that to other people? Yeah. Who's your favourite writer? Um, well, my favourite, if, if I said songwriters, I'd probably just be here for all, all their long listing, lots of, because of so many songwriters I love. But if I said my favourite writer, it'd have to be Shakespeare, William Shakespeare, who, who I first discovered at school. Have you done, done any of his plays or? Um, no, we haven't yet, but um, I really like history. So we've gone, gone and see his, seen his one of his um, productions in the Botanical Gardens in Melbourne. Yeah, oh, we yeah. saw Twelfth Night, yeah. Oh, Twelfth Night. Yeah, yeah, it was really, really good. It yeah. was really funny. Have yeah. you seen one before? Um, Shakespeare plays? Yeah. Yeah, I, I always tr I try to go, whenever there's one on, I try and go, so I've been to quite a lot. Um, they're not always, the, you know, not, I, I even like going to see Shakespeare plays, when, even if they're not that well done, because I just, just lo love the language and the, the stories. I love Macbeth, Hamlet, um, Othello, um, Twelfth Night's a good one too. Yeah. yeah. Um, I've written a couple of songs based on, or I wrote a few songs based on um, Shakespeare sonnets, so um, um, I'll play a bit of one. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate Rough winds do shake The darling buds of May The summer's lease hath all too short a day Sometime too hot The eye of heaven shines 
Nothing is his gold complexion dimmed And every fair from fair sometime declines By chance or nature's changing course untrimmed But thy eternal summer shall not fade Nor lose possession of that fair thou owest Nor shall death brag thou wondrous in his shade when in eternal lines to time thou growest As long as men can breathe or eyes can see So long lives this and this gives life to thee <laughs> There's a few, little, um, Summer's, lease, Summer's lease hath all too short a date. That's, that's the one line that's a little and bit of a And what does that mean? Um, the, um, Summer's length of time uh, doesn't last very long. Yeah. yeah. One, I mean, one of my favourite things about Shakespeare that he mixes, even in his, his so-called tragedies or his serious plays, there's always humour mixed in. There's a, a famous scene in Macbeth, you know, just after they've... Um, Macbeth and his wife have murdered the king, Duncan, and there's a scene with a, a drunken porter who's minding the gate, and there's a whole funny scene with him talking about effects of drink and, and so on. So Shakespeare had that great thing of m mixing, mixing high and low and serious and funny together, which I think always keeps audiences engaged. Oh, yeah. yeah, It's really cool that it's still relevant today, like from back in the 1600s, that it's still like people still read it now. Yeah, I just think he was just one of those people that come along uh, once in a thousand years and um, I mean, so much of our language is things we say that they came from Shakespeare were like good riddance. The first time that was that was was written down was in a Shakespeare play. You know, um, fair means or foul, good riddance, high tide. Um, there's a hot. There's so, so many phrases we use. Uh, it's neither here nor there. Like a simple thing like that. That was that first appeared in Othello. Right. So there's a, um, vanished into thin air. That's from Shakespeare. So we're, we're saying Shakespeare all the time. Do you, how do you write your lyrics? Do you write them by, by hand or yeah, on the Yeah, I write them in phone? a little book, yeah. The long hand? On my hand, yeah. Yeah, do that's you? good. Well, yeah, a bit, a bit of both now. I always used to just write, always said, write in a notebook, but if I get song ideas now, and I'm, I just usually put them straight to my phone. And then, and then I, once I've got a stack of them, I would sort of email myself the lyrics that I've got them on the computer, but but if I'm at home with a with a, with a note, notebook and I'm working on a song, I usually go longhand. Yeah. Something about going longhand for a while, but 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 then when I sort of finally get close to finishing them, and then I'll I'll sort of start typing them up on a word document. So it's neater and all that sort. Of and then you know you always end up changing like you, you change a word here and a, a couple of words there and, and then you have to think oh I'm not going to have to write the whole thing out again but yeah with the word document <laughs> you just but I actually started to I, I sort of number them so if I if I was working on a song and I'm and I'm changing the lyrics I just copy it to another document so I just have keep keep a track of the early versions of the song yeah that's awesome just in case yeah. How many instruments do you play? Uh, I play very basic piano, so I can write, I can write songs on piano, uh, some songs on piano, and, um, and guitar, and harmonica. I used to play the trumpet, but I can't anymore. Lost my lip. Um, do you want to have a little play together? Sure. An old, you know, an old folk song called um, Karina, Karina? Around him, so. Corina, Corina, go we been so long. Corina, Corina, 
Tuning. If sometimes if I learn a new tuning, then it gives 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 me a song. So maybe you can go and write a song. In yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I'll try it. Um, which one do you know that? You could I know. To? I thought I was. You know, thought I was asleep. Well, I know that one too. Yay! <laughs> ah, you did the same thing. Okay, so you did. said something, Mama began to cry. No more words than just soft songs. My head begins to throb. I just lay there playing dark and breathing slow and deep. I thought I was asleep. I don't know the last um, verse. Um, it seemed like forever. So, yeah. You start, I'll just do the harmony again. Seemed like forever to the sobbing soft. Go for a little, just, just too, too soft. soft. Jesus to send his grace and all our souls to keep. Back then, I believe. Most of this, oh yeah, mostly right, not all the time. Thank you. That's Thank good. you. Awesome. I've never done a harmony to that one before, so that's good. Yeah. I want to Thank get you. out a harmony to that song now. Thank you. 